Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That is a saying that I would have used as a child to try to diminish the impact that other people's words um, would have had on me, as though by saying those words, um, it gave me some sort of shield against the pain that siblings' words or uh, kids in the neighborhood or that kids at school um, would have. But I'm going to say that Genesis 1, the creation story, addresses the importance of words. And so we started yesterday with that, that cool reminder that God's spirit, his breath, his wind sweeps across the dark waters. And then to create, to bring order out of chaos, it's as simple as this. God said, and it was so. Think about the correlation between breath, wind, and speech. See, I can, I can move my esophagus, I can move um, my mouth, my lips, but without wind, without breath, words do not come. And, and this statement is about the power of God. There's not a battle between God and chaos. It's as simple as God speaks, creation responds. And so God just subtly looks out and speaks. And it is so the power of the word and that power is then going to be used by John. John, um, who writes a different Christmas story than the rest, because his is not about the child, but is about this word. The word of God that was there from the very beginning. The word that created now coming down into creation and becoming flesh. The same word that spoke at creation is now living amongst us. And as Christ lived amongst us, notice how he addresses creation. When he's stuck in the storm and the disciples are afraid and he's sleeping on the boat, he simply gets up and speaks to creation. Peace, be still. And it was so. The, the power of the word of God of speech is all through Scripture. James will remind us how powerful our tongues are, that our tongues can be used to build up and to tear down. He even gives us a kind of dire warning that uh, fresh water doesn't come from bad, and bad water doesn't come from a fresh spring. In other words, watch your speech, because your speech is an indication of, of your heart. And so as, as the body of Christ, as, as the believers, we need to watch how we speak. We should speak in ways that honor a God who looked in the chaos and brought forth order and peace. We, we should speak in a way that honors our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who when the storm was raging, instead of standing up and yelling and screaming with, he simply spoke peace. We should, as Apostle Paul says, use our words to build up and encourage, not tear down. And so when I look at this power of the creation story, a part of it is to warn us about the power of our speech. How are we speaking? How are we talking to others? What are we speaking into creation? Can we speak God's peace and presence to a world desperate to know that God is there for them? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, for the times in which our speech, our words, we're not honoring the word. Father, we, we rest in your never-failing grace. And Father, we ask that, that your breath would pour upon us, that your spirit would be in us so that we would speak words that encourage and build up, that draw people into your presence. Father, when the world is surrounded and full of chaos, may we speak your peace for your glory. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to remind you to 
stay physically separate, but please stay connected. And let's use our words to love, and let's use our actions to love everybody.